everybody, today we're going to talk about mean, median, mode, and range. And this goes with the learning goal, I can make meaningful comparisons between two sets of numbers using mean, median, mode, and range. So what we use mean, median, mode, and range for is when we have a big set of numbers and we want to be able to talk about those and compare them to other big sets of numbers. If you use mean, median, mode, and range, those can uh, take a whole set of numbers and boil it down to just one number and it helps us to make comparisons. Um, they all mean different things, so they tell you different things about a set of numbers, but they're all useful in comparing large sets of numbers. So we're just going to kind of go through and take each one of those four things, and then we have one other vocabulary term that you should include in your notes as well, and so we're just going to go through and talk about how to do each one of these. So what is mean? Mean, a lot of times we'll use the word average to mean the same thing. And the way that we find mean is by adding up a set of numbers, so the sum of a set of numbers divided by the number of numbers. So down here, I have a collection of numbers. Someone did a survey, they asked 20 students in school how many times every day do they go and get a drink from the drinking fountain. And so these numbers right here are um, everybody's responses, those 20 students' responses. So if I want to find the mean, I'm going to go through, I'm going to add up all of those numbers, and then I'm going to divide by the number of numbers, which would be 20. So let's see what that would look like. So down here, you can see that I have the sum of all of those numbers. So I'm adding up every single one of those numbers, and then I'm dividing that by 20. So now I need to think through what is the sum of all of those numbers. So I have to add them up. So I'm going to do that now. I would probably, if you're calculating mean, use a calculator. So it's okay to use a calculator in this case. So I don't have to add zero because that's not going to change my sum. I'll do one plus one. So I went ahead and added that twice on my calculator just to make sure. And I ended up with a sum of 73. So the sum ends up being 73 divided by 20. And again, I would use a calculator for that. So my mean is 3.65, mean or average. So on average, people are going to the drinking fountain about 3.65 times a day. Now obviously no one person can go 0.65 times. So my average is between three and four times of getting a drink with it being a little bit closer to four times of getting a drink every day. Now, if you look at this group of data that I have right here, I have something present in this group of data called an outlier. An outlier is a data item that's either much higher or much lower than the other items in the data set. And usually it should kind of stick out as saying, oh my gosh, that number is different from the other group of numbers. So if I look here, you can see that 20 is much higher than the other numbers in the set. All the other numbers in the set, the highest one is five. They range between zero and five. And then we have this number 20 that really sticks out. When you use mean and you have an outlier, your mean gets thrown off. So in other words, it changes the mean enough that it makes it less useful. When you have an outlier in your data, you need to think about other ways of describing the data other than mean. So that can be a problem with mean. You don't necessarily want to describe a set of numbers using the mean if there's an outlier present in that set of data. So in this case, the, the mean that we got, which was 3.65, was thrown off by the fact that we have that 20 there that's an outlier. And so we want to look at other types of ways of describing this set of data as well. Another thing that we can look at when we want to describe a set of data is the median. Median is the very middle value of a set of numbers when the data are arranged in numerical order. In other words, I arrange all my numbers in order. That's numerical order. Just put them in order that they would go in from smallest to largest. And the very middle value is going to be the median. If there are an even number of data points, then the median is the mean of the two middle values. So in this case, remember again, I have 20 numbers right here. So this is going to apply. There are an even number of data points. So let's first go through and put these in order, and then we'll see what that looks like when we try to find the middle number. So you can see I've gone through and written out 
this whole set of numbers in order from smallest to largest. And um, I cross them off as I went along so that I could keep track and make sure that I have them all listed out there. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go through and I'm going to cross off the smallest and the largest number and keep going until I get to the middle. So I'm just going to keep crossing off smallest, largest, smallest, largest, okay? And I'm left with two numbers in the middle because I have an even number of numbers. If I had had an odd number, I would have been left with just one number in the middle, and that would be my median. But in this case, I'm left with two numbers in the middle. Now, they're both the same. So in this case, my median is going to be 3. Because if I add those two together, I get 6. Divide by the number of numbers, 2. 6 divided by 2 is 3. So the mean of two numbers that are equal is that same number. Um, if these had been different, I would have added them together and divided by 2 and then taken that and used it as my median. So in this case, my median for this set of numbers would be 3. And you can see that's a little bit lower than what my average was. My average was 3.65, but remember that got dragged a little bit higher because I had that outlier of 20. So outliers don't affect the median as much as they do the mean. So, because you're just going to cross off the largest number or the smallest number, and so you just get rid of it that way. Another way to describe a set of numbers is to look at the mode, and the mode is the most frequent value. There can be more than one mode if you have two numbers that appear the same number of times in a data set or three numbers that appear the same number of times in a data set. If all of the numbers appear the same number of times, there's no mode. So sometimes you have more than one mode, sometimes you have no mode. So mode can be a little bit strange. So let's look at this. Um, if I look at my data set, I have one zero, so it's, that's not going to be the mode. I have 120, so that's not going to be the mode. Um, one appears one, two, three times, okay? So I have to see if there's anything that appears more than three times. Um, two appears one, two, three, four, five, six times. And um, if I remember back from listing, three appears three times and five appears five times. So two is the most frequent number with six. So that will be my mode, two. It appeared more times than any other number in the data set. And that tells me a little bit about this data set as well. My median was three. So the very middle of my data set was three. And now my mode is two. So, um, and that tells me that, again, that's kind of reinforcing that that average of 3.65 was really thrown off by the outlier of 20, or thrown off a little bit. Um, so the most frequent number of times that people go and get a drink from the drinking fountain would be two. Another thing we can look at when we look at a data set is range. And range is just the difference between the greatest and least values. To find difference, remember difference tells you that you're going to be subtracting. Difference means the answer to a subtraction problem. So I'm going to take the greatest number and subtract the least, the smallest number, and that will give me the range. So again, um, we remember that 20 is our outlier, that's the very biggest one, and zero is our smallest number. So I would just do 20 minus zero, and so I have a range here of 20. So that means my numbers are spreading anywhere along this range that's 20 numbers big. The range also is kind of thrown off by the outlier. If I got rid of that outlier, um, my range would be anywhere from 0 to 5. So I would do 5 minus 0. And you can see my range would be a lot smaller. There would just be a range of 5. So range can also be thrown off by the outliers. So here are your two questions for today. Um, Please pause the video now and go ahead and answer those questions.